If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. All right, guys, in this episode of From the Luthier's Workbench, I'm going to be forging ahead with part five of my oak butcher block laminated kitchen top guitar build. Seems like all my guitar builds are a mouthful. Anyway, in the last episode, I made the neck. And in this episode, I'm going to be making the body you see here. And of course, that means a lot of CNC work. So if that's your cup of tea, get ready to drink up. Let's get started. I've talked about the process that I follow when creating files for CNC before in other videos. So I'm just going to kind of touch on it here. But what I do is I'll, I'll create a two-dimensional drawing in Adobe Illustrator. Then I'll bring that file uh, or the elements from that file into Easel by Inventables. And in that program, I can assign my tool paths. I can select the bits and establish my uh, feed and speeds for each cutting operation. Now when it comes time to actually start cutting, the first thing I have to do is to make sure that my blank is square with the y-axis movement of my CNC machine. So I'll temporarily clamp it into position. And then what I'll do is I'll use a pointer bit chucked into my router and I'll jog the router back and forth on the y-axis center line to make sure that that point is right on the line. And if necessary, I'll nudge the blank until I get it perfectly lined up with the center line. Then I can move the pointer bit right to the exact center. And this is my reference point. And once I'm on that reference point, I'll raise the router up and I'll swap out that pointer bit for my cutting bit, which in this case is a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral upcut bit. Then what I can do after getting it chucked into the, the router is I can move the router uh, nine inches forward and then seven inches to the left and then down 0.1 inch. That places the tip of the bit exactly on my home position and from there I can start the first cutting operation which in this case is going to be the recessed uh, shelf for the control cavity cover. This cutting operation will be the only operation that is performed on the back side of the lower blank. And remember, I'm going to be carving in two blanks, an upper blank and then a lower blank. After I finished cutting that shelf for the uh, control cavity cover, I'll remove the blank and flip it over so that I can start the carving operations on the inside of the lower blank. And of course, before I can do any of that, I've got to make sure that the center line, once again, is lined up perfectly with the y-axis movement of my router. I know some of you are going to be wondering why I don't use a pin alignment system. I used to, but if you really think through the process, you'll realize it doesn't actually save you any time and it isn't necessarily any more accurate. And then once I've homed the router, I can fire it up and start cutting the second operation, which is all the weight relief uh, cavities inside that lower half of the body, as well as the control cavity. This particular cutting operation is going to take just under two hours. Now before all you Cliff Clavens get all excited and start commenting about how I should use a dust shoe on my CNC machine, I would, except it doesn't make for very interesting video. Once the machine starts to cut the perimeter shape, I know I'm almost finished. Part of the process of cutting the perimeter shape is to leave some tabs so that the body itself doesn't go flying around. What I can do then is take a hacksaw blade and cut those tabs to liberate the body from the blank. And of course I've got to take my Japanese Iwasaka file and file down those remaining nubs 
smooth with the side of the body. With the lower half of the body blank complete, I can now move on to all the carving operations that will be carried out on the upper uh, body blank. So um, I've got to get everything lined up just like I did on that lower blank. And once I have the body lined up with the y-axis center line, I can then position the router in the exact center. And then so after swapping out the bit, I can uh, jog it forward nine inches and then seven inches to the left and then lower it down into the home start position. The first carving operation on the upper body blank is going to be the dragon inlay design that I've come up with. And I'll start out by cutting this using a 16th of an inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit to do most of the uh, hogging out of the wood. Then I'll come back and do a finishing pass with a 30 seconds of an inch diameter bit. And this will add the details and clean up the carving. The total depth for this inlay carving is about 0 0.08 inches or slightly more than a 16th of an inch. And that's deep enough to allow me to fill it with some glow-in-the-dark resin that I plan to use and then sand it down flush with the surface. More about that in a future episode. The dragon inlay will be the only carving operation conducted on the front side of that upper blank. So to do all the other carving operations, I need to flip the blank over and then go through my process of making sure that the blank is aligned with the y-axis. The bit that I'm going to be using for all the remaining uh, cutting operations is a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And first thing I have to do is to position it right over that center reference mark on my blank. Then I'll jog it forward nine inches and then to the left seven inches and then I'll drop it down 0.1 inch which places the tip of the bit right at the home start position. Now the cutting operation I'll be carrying out on this upper blank is to cut out the uh, weight relief cavities as well as the upper portion of the control cavity, the pickup pockets, and then the neck pocket. Because of the way that I line up my blanks, I can be assured that later on when I glue the two halves together, everything is going to line up precisely. As you can see, this guitar is going to feature a humbucker and a pair of single coil pickups. And once the router starts to cut the perimeter shape, I know that I'm almost done. After removing the blank, you can see how the tabs hold the body into the blank so that it's not going to fly around during the carving operation. And then all I have to do is grab a hacksaw blade and cut those tabs in order to uh, liberate the body from within the blank. And I'll file down those uh, tabs just to kind of clean up the sides. And this will give you an idea of how the top and the bottom will fit together to complete the body. To glue up the halves, I'm going to use Type Bond 3 wood glue. And I'll make sure to use a, an ample amount and I'll spread it around with a uh, glue brush and try to get every bit of the surface thoroughly covered. Then what I like to do is I'll sprinkle some table salt, just a few grains in several locations and what that does is it will keep the two halves from sliding around when I start to apply clamping pressure. And speaking of clamping pressure, uh, I like to add just enough to get some glue squeeze out showing but I try not to go overboard uh, because I don't want to starve the surface of glue. 
And I'll typically let the glue dry for about 24 hours. And then I'll pull off the clamps and you can see how this body turned out. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, my one concern, you know, since this is oak, was how much it's gonna weigh. So I threw the neck and the body on a scale and it came out to about 5.6 pounds. That's not too bad. All right, well, that's all the time I've got for this episode. In the next episode, what I hope to be doing is filling the inlay, this dragon design, with glow-in-the-dark powder, much in the same way that I did the fretboard, although I'm going to try a slightly different approach, so stay tuned for that. I also hope to do a little bit of sanding and get things ready for the application of the finish. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.